Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast. This is our movie podcast where we watch movies that are either awesomely bad or awesomely awesome. And today's episode is episode number 35. I would say it's fucking awesomely awesome. Oh, 100%. This movie is spectacular. We're talking about sudden death. And don't worry if you're sick of JCVD. This is the last JCVD for a while, right? We don't have any more on the docket. So um, until he comes out with a new movie, I think we're going to be done with him for quite a while. Yeah, I would love to see a JCVD Statham team up or maybe a JCVD Momoa team up. Has that we been done We would go yet? to the theaters to see that. <laughs> if you like today's episode, let us know uh, what movies you'd like us to watch. In the meantime, you can check out bonus episodes. Uh, number two, actually, yeah, we got number 36, 37, and 38 up now on gasdigital.com. We watch Class of 99, Patriot with Steven Seagal, and Moonfall with uh, Patrick Wilson and Holly Berry and others. Those are up now for our subscribers at gasdigital.com. And today's episode is brought to you by Prosthetic Records. So if you're into heavy music, go to shop.prostheticrecords.com. Check out their new uh, record from the band Pupil Slicer. Great name. Hard. Hard. And the the, the whole Patreon crew was, was digging these this band uh check out shop.prostheticrecords.com use the promo code mmf2023 like milwaukee metal fest 2023 mmf2023 20, and you're going to save 15 percent off the new pupil slicer record which is called blossom and uh yeah it's a banger you're going to dig it also thank you to indiemerchstore.com use the promo code just 10 you're going to save 10 percent off your order you'll see all the restocks you'll see the pre-order for the new swarms of light uh sign of sorry Jeez, I'm mixing up band names right now. The new, the new signs of the swarm. Uh, apologies to signs of the swarm. What did I call them? No, I, I don't even know. I think yeah, we nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Edit that. Make it sound good. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see the new arrivals. Uh, you'll see. I even have my own curated page over there. But yeah, you'll see the uh, job for a cowboy, demonocracy, yellow marble, twelve inch. You'll see the ion dissonance, breathing is irrelevant, twelve inch. They even have the cannibal corpse of violence, unimagined, uncensored T shirt back in stock, and many others. IndieMerchStore.com promo code just to ten. Also check out all the leftover Milwaukee Metal Fest. Uh, merchandise over at martyrstore.net m-a-r-t-y-r-s-t-o-r-e.net link is always in the show notes and while i have you check out the Jasta patreon patreon.com slash shasta there's a, a recap there's a live podcast up that i don't think we're going to release publicly because i think there was too much good inside information on that one so you're just gonna have to go to patreon.com slash Jasta. it is what it is use a promo code mmf 24 for 20% off at martyrstore.net. But make sure you go and use the code soon because by the time you hear this, it's right about to be expired. MMF 20, MMF 24 at martyrstore.net. Also got to thank monarchheavy.com. They brought you Crowbar, Black Label Society, Texas Hippie Coalition, and many other bands. And they got the new Creeping Death, which you can pre order now or order now rather and use the code 666. You're going to get 15% off at M-N-R-K-H-E-A-V-Y.com, promo code 666. Big thanks to Monarch Heavy for supporting the Milwaukee Metal Fest and supporting today's podcast with Howard Jones, Brian, Charlie Belmore, and myself. Charlie absolutely killed it at the pre-party. He learned Slayer. He learned fucking oh, yeah. Ripper, Ripper songs, uh, Exodus. You know, he did songs with Rob Dukes. He learned like 115 songs for the weekend. The set, the set was crazy. He, <laughs> he absolutely killed it. Uh, one last thing I want to plug before we uh, get on to, the, to today's movie podcast. Got to thank Metal Blade Records. Check out Howard's old bandmate, uh, Mike D. His, his buddy Mike D. He's got Death Ray Vision. Go to MetalBladeRecords.com or MetalBlade.com slash Death Ray Vision. Pre-order the new records coming out June 30th. Big thanks to Metal Blade and death ray vision maybe who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll see death ray vision doing a couple local gigs out my way hint hint we'll see we're trying to make something happen metalblade.com slash death ray vision for the new albums coming out june 30th all right enjoy today's episode of the how awesome is this podcast with howard jones charlie brian and myself now on to the show
What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the show. It's another edition of the How Awesome Is This podcast. And yes, we are doing another Jean-Claude Van Damme movie because, well, why not? Does anyone want to give, does anybody here want to give us a reason as to why we shouldn't watch any Van Damme movie? No. <laughs> no. You know what's funny is I really got bitter at Jean-Claude Van Damme, and then we started watching a bunch of trash, and I was like, <laughs> and I miss my boy, JCVD. <laughs> was yeah. Like, it became romantic. It's pretty bad when you're, you're longing for the action flicks of Van Damme. Yeah. Like, you know, we went down a pretty weird rabbit hole. Yes. After you watch any Uva Bowl film, <laughs> then you go back to any Van Damme movie, and it's like you're watching fucking Citizen Kane. There, <laughs> there are so many Uva Bowl f- films that we still have to watch. Oh, they are he he's prolific. We gotta we gotta, <laughs> we gotta pace those out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can parcel those in between things. All right. I do, I do want to say that when this came out, I was so fucking stoked. I remember because, I saw it in the theater. I, I, yes. my, dad, my dad took me out. He was like, all right, you, you're old enough. You could go now. And I was like, yeah. So did I. We either had a film the night before or the night after. And I remember we went and the, the poster said action goes into overtime. And I was like, it's cold. <laughs> Where do I pay? Like, where do I pay my money? <laughs> and then once, <laughs> because that was back when you would just see the trailer on TV. There was no way to like see the trailer on the internet and watch yeah. it a bunch of times. So when you saw it or you saw the poster when you went to go see another movie, that was all you got. Like, I don't feel like anybody at the time was like, let me see how uh, this, this movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme got reviewed before I... <laughs> No, you know, cough up my six bucks or whatever. Hey man, Siskel and Ebert had a lot of power back in the day. Yeah, they I, did. People well, would go I, nuts. I, yeah, over but there. that was well, for people say, that wanted to see fucking shock a lot or some shit. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> they love that movie. I I do have to give him props. A lot of times, I, my parents loved that fucking show because they were adults. Um, but uh, like, they. <laughs> Um, a lot of times, Roger Ebert, like the other Gene Sisko, would totally thrash like all the Arnold movies. But Roger Ebert would be like, "No, this movie. Listen, it was an Arnold movie, but it was pretty goddamn good." Like he would, <laughs> you, want it, you have to go with the bar. Like, what is it? And then mm-hmm. judge on what it is. Like, quite frankly, I think this, as far as being an actual like motion picture, this might be his best film. Sudden death. I'll give you that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I could. There's other movies let's... that are more awesome, but let's be honest, like as an actual film, this is actually constructed like people yeah. weren't doing cocaine while writing and editing this film. And I think it benefited. <laughs> yep. Oh, I yeah. I, I wrote down this movie is a mix between Die Hard, Olympus Has Fallen, and the last Boy Scout. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's definitely you know awesome. what's funny? You know, every after Die Hard, every single Die Hard on uh Die Hard in uh whatever kind of movie they made after it, the the like the setup for all the bad guys, it like happens in like 45 seconds, almost like the director's going, you, you, you know what we're, go- we're, you know what we're doing. So we're not going to give you all that. You guys know. You, you guys, it's a diehard movie, but we couldn't get Bruce. So we're going to have this guy be a, a French Canadian fireman. Did, did they ever explain why he was at the game in full uniform? I didn't pick that up. He was a, it, it was the first day he was being a fire marshal for that uh, um, hockey arena. Which makes sense because literally everybody in the arena knew his name. They, they, they knew his first name. Oh, yeah. And, Which and I, like, I, I forgot what it is, but yeah, yeah like, they do it. The oh, was, or Darren was it? McCord? Oh, yeah, I think it is. 
Well, th- let's yeah, because let's start at the top before we watch the trailer. Just give everybody a brief synopsis of Son of Death. If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But he's a firefighter who doesn't get to uh, s- save a girl in time. And basically, that's like, the, <laughs> that's like his traumatic incident. I love Howard just, just like, yeah, as a girl dies in a brutal fire. It's like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, I just love the lack of effort they put in to explain. Like, it was just, he was already in, he was already buried with this girl. They didn't give you any time to show us that he was, like, a good person. He didn't, he didn't show us, like, talking to the little kid and, like, being cute with the kids. So you're like, oh, he's a nice guy. Nothing. He was just under the fire yelling with that horrible yell. He, that's the only thing he had. Terrible yell. Like, Do you know why? You know from, when you go from like Stallone and Arnold, and then just like, <sighs> like you just rasp. All it is is rasp, and you're like, ah, oh. like it's, it's so he, funny. It sounds so unintimidating or, or scary. He, <laughs> ye- he yelled, "I can't breathe." <laughs> <laughs> can't I, breathe. Had to re- I had to rewind it because <laughs> he yelled it really hard and loud. <laughs> But the kid, like, they don't even try to do CPR on the kid. That, I was, no. that, that took me out of it, and then I paused it, and I was like, wait, so you're not even going to try to bring her outside and do CPR? She literally just died. Like, Or or was there grievous injuries off camera that we didn't see? It I don't know. It might not have but, stuck yet. What's that? I said the death might not have stuck yet. Get out there and yeah. pump, her, pump her full of life. Yeah, yeah, a I valid mean, life-saving have... tool is to yeah. stare directly at the person. And if, that is all. Well, let's, I let's guess if honest. you're not if you're not a player in the NFL, they can't bring you back to life. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's let's be for honest. For whatever reason. They filmed a scene. They for sure at least attempted to film a scene where he was trying to give that child CPR and being emotional that he couldn't get him back to life. And they were just like, you know what, man? Don't worry about it. We're just gonna cut around. <laughs> well, no, we well, can't make that believable. <laughs> I, I had to look up the writer as soon as that scene ended. I paused it. I looked up the writer, and the writer is um, well, it's directed by Peter Hyams, and the writer is this guy Quintano. What's his What's his first name? But you would know a ton of his movies. Like he he writes mostly comedy movies, I want to say, um, uh, like Police Academy, and let's see here, let me see if I can find this guy's name real quick. Alvaro Enrique Quint- Quintano. Oh no. Um, let's see, Sudden Death movie. Yes, that's the guy who did the novelization, Gene Quintano. <laughs> the Gene novelization. Quintano. <laughs> <laughs> There's a novel of sudden death. <laughs> oh, I'm glad God, you got I that. Read that. <laughs> okay, so Gene Quintano <laughs> did the screenplay. He is the these are the movies that he's known for. Police Academy 4, Citizens on wow. Patrol. Police Academy 3, Back in Training. Getting a little better. So the classics only. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote the screenplay for The Musketeer. Did anybody see The Musketeer in 2001? Starring um, Mina Suvari and nope. <laughs> Catherine. I don't even know. So I no, never. I, this other, is yeah. wow. Just the what biggest about, movie. What about Police Academy 5? Assignment Miami Beach. Are That's we going to have to do a whole Police Academy <sighs> <laughs> just the I, reaction uh, oh, uh, but what if we could get homeboy on the I, podcast who does all the noises oh so i will oh, oh okay now we're talking yeah, yeah. <laughs> well we gotta watch one we gotta watch the first one so we can give him props we can't watch five <laughs> <laughs> i know that i don't want to that's like out. that's sort of like it going down the list of fast and furious weren't we discussing that charlie is like yeah like could you watch all of them no dude 
It's I like would get that. to Tokyo Drift and tap out. I think if you were including that. But the, oh yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I'm talking about. Can you can could say like we had to do this? Could we go from <laughs> one to ten? We had to, we had to do it. Could could, could you could, seriously watch all ten of these movies while well, ten are about to come out? <laughs> <laughs> I, I All right, like you just idea, like, you just came up with the ultimate pitch, Howard. What we'll do is we'll find out how much prints of all ten movies are. We'll rent out, like you know, how, you know how you can rent out like these small theaters. We'll rent out one of these like small boutique theaters, oh, and we'll geez. tell people oh. we'll we'll tell people we are going to have a marathon. Bring your blankets, your popcorn, whatever, and and we'll just torch. Like we'll start it at like midnight. <laughs> we'll, we'll start go, at midnight. <laughs> yeah. Start so, at noon and go to midnight, or start at midnight and go to noon. I mean, so. I think it's gonna it's gonna go. It's way. I think it's way longer than twelve hours, man. <laughs> it's, it's I would literally like ghost hours. my own idea. <laughs> All right, can we talk about this? This this writer wrote King Solomon's Minds. Remember that with Richard Chamberlain. Wow, you Richard Chamberlain. <laughs> yeah, remember that? I remember that guy. Dude, Nate. so so this so this movie, right? It came out, let's see. This came out in 95. So I feel like they hired this guy to write the movie because he's he's a Hollywood OG, but he's going to try to have like the comedy aspect come into it. But then when I first saw that scene and they cut it, and Charlie made all those good points about how there was no explanation. There was no like getting to know the character because somebody came in and must have been like, no, listen, guys, we have so much violence that we need to put in this film and <laughs> just cut everything else out and just have violence. That first start scene to finish in the arena when like the dudes are rolling in and killing everybody. I was like, this is the end of the movie. This is like, yeah. this is like the last 15 minutes of the movie before everything <laughs> gets better. And I was like, it just continues on like that for oh, an yeah. hour and 20 minutes. Before I definitely wrote that. The body count of this movie <laughs> is pretty decent. <laughs> was there, was there a trans killing in this movie? Absolutely. I, was. <laughs> no. The mascot, very progressive movie, by the way. In yes. the 90s, they had a mascot, and the mascot was trans. Yes. Because Mr. Penguin is a lady, asshole, I believe is the line. Yes. <laughs> I, okay, so was there any exposition explaining, aside from the locker room scene? Because that would have been so great if when he pulls up and he meets the dad or he meets the other dad, like the stepdad, it would have been so great if he was like, you know, I played semi pro, but they were like, no, 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 save it, bro. We're going to have a whole other scene <laughs> where he's the man. He's the cool dad gets on his first day. They're letting him in to meet yeah. the players at the fucking Stanley that's what, cup. That's what they always do. Like, they let you write it. <laughs> I can't even get into my own show. I literally, I get held up at the backstage door for like 20 minutes. The intro is rolling. I'm like, trust me, bro. Here's my laminate. Here's a Google, a picture of me. It's me. Let me in. But no, they're like you first day on the job. Oh, it's that firefighter. Yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. Don't talk about what happened, but oh, okay. Yeah. Let him in. Like that would be famous. <laughs> like no other firefighter has ever lost somebody, but let, let me ask you guys something. I believe that um, Jean-Claude Van Damme has a serious, um, you know, um, difficulty understanding the English language because I think that he thinks firefighters are Navy SEALs. <laughs> yes. Yes. The, the skill set this man has in this movie is that of Arnold in Commando, yet I mean, why? Yep. Why does he know how to fight? Were they like, no, okay, that was then... that was totally believable. Pittsburgh Fire Department <laughs> starts with kung fu. Like day yeah. one, you what need about? kung fu, you need taekwondo, you need tai chi, and everything else to fight the fire. And it you just happens to... to have a practical use. Do they teach you, you how to, to make wrist-mounted bullet? Like, yeah, you, yeah. You know how to like make what? Weapons. You know how to jump down off of a building and hang because <laughs> all yep. firefighters have to do that i mean it's you, you, you have to roundhouse doors open to get into the fire that's how they and do it. fire out 
And yep. <laughs> that's what yeah. he, like he was like, it's a firefighter, a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the also, most logical answer, and I hate it. That man um, had superpowers. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I also, I also love the amount of time they took setting up. Like, they kidnap the chef's wife, so he can. Do, and it's like, no, just you already murdered like twelve people. Just kill the chef. Like the amount but, of steps. What if she wasn't home? Oh. What if oh yeah, that, it, it served no purpose. I mean, I know what it did, but it didn't do it. Yeah, <laughs> the CIA is cool. Could have still gotten in there. It would have been. Fun. Yep. It yeah, was it was the like weirdest. this is back when <laughs> it was, was when weird. You needed a MacGyver element. You needed the you needed the other sort of um, terrorist tactics that they think the audience was going to believe. So each time they had like one of these terrorist tactics, <laughs> sure. Sure. We, we watch it now and we're like, Oh, what the fuck? But back then we were like, Oh my God, that's what they would do. <laughs> they would- <laughs> I, yeah. In a way I thought that, but in another way, it's like, why would the vice president be there? And also, it didn't seem very hard to get to him. <laughs> well, and then what happens when you kill the vice president? Like, who becomes vice president when you kill the president? When you kill the vice president, who steps up? Like, some whack senator? Like, what? Speaker, I, I don't, speaker of the House. Speaker of the House yeah, I was becomes... Gonna, I was going to say, yeah, movie version of Nancy Pelosi. So, oh, my uh, God. With her big ass. Joe Piscopo. I don't know. <laughs> like, Nancy Pelosi if, with the heavies. I just, I thought it was so weird that they were like, "Oh yeah, we're we're gonna kill people throughout the game," and then like to just quickly, we'll talk about the rest obviously. But I just love at the end where like the the terrorist abides by sudden death rules. <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, like, wait, he's like, you know what? Yeah. You know, you know what? I'm gonna respect this game. Let's let's wait. <laughs> also, if a vice president dies. Uh, he just nom- they just nominate a new vice president, but we all know I really mean he, right? <laughs> so, so po- Powers Booth uh, play- plays the villain in this. Uh, rest in peace, Powers Allen Booth. Amazing, uh, he's American, a great bad uh, guy. Great uh, bad guy. Was a powerful guy. character actor. Uh, many great roles in in t- film and television. Uh, received a primetime Emmy award. Multiple uh, nominations for uh, Screen Actors Guild Awards. Born in Texas, 1948. Died. Wow, it was already. Damn, it was in 2017. I didn't realize it was that long ago. Um, it feels like it was. It was recently because we wa- We've watched multiple movies where he's the uh, where he's the villain. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you look at that face. Are you thinking? Oh yeah, he's a good guy. No, he's bad guy face. Even yeah. even if he was gonna play a good guy, he would be like the CIA guy who kills everybody. Mm-hmm. To get the yeah, you know, like, yeah, exactly. He's like that guy's gonna betray me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If he was a good guy, he'd be at the Ed Harris role of the movie. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, Ed Harris, per- Ed, perfect bad guy. <laughs> can't be a good guy. Just doesn't work. Yep. Robert Duvall, good guy, bad guy. What would you prefer? Uh, in his later years, he's a good guy. In his yeah. earlier career, he was a bad guy. Yeah, because I watched a good one. If you guys want to watch a good mystery uh, with um, Christian Bale, um, I think it's called Pale Blue Sky. I watched that last night, and and Duvall's in it. It's oh. a it's a recent one where it's like there's a young kid plays Edgar Allan Poe. It's oh not as, right oh I saw yeah it's on Pale Netflix Blue right Eye? yeah or Pale Blue yeah Eye that's or, it yeah yeah Pale Blue Eye. It. Um, it it was pretty good. It was it, it was not as good as sudden death, obviously. <laughs> what is? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I was on the plane. I literally, they literally heard me yell, "Oh my god, splits on ice!" Because he put on. I thought for sure we were going to see the splits on ice. I was hoping, and I yelled it, and I I got some looks for it. Did we see the splits? We did not see the splits in there. Didn't there was see no it. butt shot. I thought for sure he was going to block a shot and do the splits. I thought yep. for sure. So I got stoked and literally yelled it on the plane. I didn't and see got it. denied. <laughs> I got denied. 
Wow. So I, they really, that's an opportunity that was missed there for sure. Yeah. I, my mind went there immediately. I'm like, this is happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, what a quick interruption here letting you know today's episode is brought to you by monarchheavy.com if you want to check out some good tunes whether it's crowbar creeping death texas hippie coalition black label society they got they even got ace from kiss formerly of kiss who would have thought you say freely or freely what do you say i say freely but i'm probably wrong ace freely well they got a great roster of bands and right now you can get that Desiderium album from Sam Nuri, who helped us kick off the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Use the promo code 666. You're going to save 15% off your order at MNRKHEAVY.com. That's monarchheavy.com. Big thanks to Monarch Heavy. While I have you, if you want some leftover Milwaukee Metal Fest merchandise, go to martyrstore.net. Use the promo code MMF24. You'll see we have bandanas, event tees. We even reprinted the Dahmer tee just for this week. So get it before it sells out. See, see the mascots got the glasses, got the Dahmer glasses on, and everything. People oh. were loving that. <laughs> it's hilarious. Go to martyrstore.net and use a promo code MMF24. Now back to the show. <laughs> what about right in the beginning when they are pull when the bad guys are pulling up to the arena? No one hears them just shoot machine guns. No. And, no. and kill these guys. <laughs> and then everybody else is in on it. Like, yeah, like, and starts playing. Nine people. <laughs> I thought of that too. It's like, are we to believe they took over all the security because they're chasing him through the crowd? He's stepping on people. The cameramen aren't even looking. Yeah, nobody's no stepping him. No one's <laughs> saying, "Hey, what the fuck, man?" What, what like, would you? They covered a lot of bases. What would you say the big one-liner in this one is? Dead I, heroes get the best funerals. That was a good one. Well, that's a yeah. good line. <laughs> uh, Bang, I, I I'm immortal. Good line from the villain. That's the one. Say, Bang, I'm immortal. There you go. I I will say I actually remembered the plastic explosive like joke thing. I remembered that from. I, I barely remembered this movie, but then when he the guy comes around the corner and he like holds up the C four and he's like. You know, this is this is the most powerful explosive in the world. Just like saying, like, oh, you're if you shoot yeah. him up, and he's like, I set that up. You need a detonator, and then he like kills the guy, and there's a guy right behind him, and he turns around and goes, "This is the most powerful." And I, was like, that, that's, I think that's the first genuine, perfect, perfect comic timing beat that yeah. John Claude's ever done, and I think that was part of it that just made it feel better. And the yeah, that, so much definitely. of it felt like a real movie. Well, that definitely made me think, okay, Gene Quintano <coughs> is getting his money for writing this movie because they must have cut out so many other jokes because it was just fucking brutal violence. Yeah. I couldn't believe <laughs> how violent it was. And then just when one brutal, violent part is a, like the poor child who shot this role, like there, she's in the ladies' room, people are getting killed. There's people getting killed, hung on doors, people getting shot, <laughs> oh, yeah. people getting maimed. People I mean, getting yeah. bonied the out to the cops. can you use to kill people? <laughs> I thought of that. I'm like, the lack of trauma on this child right now is baffling. <laughs> I mean, She's seen so many murders. Murder after murder. <laughs> Don't trust the six year old who can do a pull up. <laughs> I That's, I did I did love that she saved herself. Like I wrote down in all caps, mm-hmm. she saved herself. Yeah, she <laughs> so sure progressive, did. so per- girl girl boss, OG girl boss. She right might be there. Skipping ahead just a little bit, but what yeah, sorry, those, sir, we... But what's in those jars <laughs> that he threw at the end? Because at first I was like vinegar and baking soda. That's weird. What is he going to use that for? Yeah, and oh, then he throws it, and it's a twenty-pound explosive. Like, just <laughs> no explanation on how that happened. Just MacGyver chemistry. Yeah. They the things that you learn being a fire fighter. Yeah, that's all. The oh, you always learn how to make weapons as a firefighter. <laughs> the phrase "fight fire oh, with yeah. fire" comes from somewhere. Oh. <laughs> yeah, fight fire with bullets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if he had said fight fire with fire at some point in the movie that I would have just jumped up and cheered <laughs> like flame throw to guy. But he already did that. You think they go back and they look through the old kills 
from the other movies and they're like oh, listen yeah. we don't have enough we don't really have any movie with jean claude in the kitchen killing and what could, okay so what could we put in there we could put dry ice in there we could put all sorts of knives all sorts of mm-hmm. like like you has a he ever had a, a deep <laughs> yeah. fryer kill a, a fucking deli slicer kill or, or an almost deli slicer kill right i did think that i thought that i was like can we move out of the kitchen? This, this, is, this is a lot of food-based death. <laughs> I, I really liked that in the beginning of the movie, like Jean-Claude just like walked his children around and you were basically just like foreshadowing all of the fight scenes. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, let's go to the locker room. <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Yep. Yeah. Which was also a natural thing to do, bring your kids to work on your first day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you what? get free tickets to the Stanley Cup final. Yeah. It was yeah. good that they had the. Um, I thought it was good that they had the Blackhawks and the Penguins because I thought, oh right, yeah, this is going to have a bigger opening, right? If it because if if it was like set in French Canada, you know, the French area of Canada, like oh with the Nordiques or something, it wasn't going to hit as hard. It, the Penguins is a good one because it's a, it's a it's a cheap place to film, right? Didn't they do like the Dark Knight in Pittsburgh too? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so what happened with I his like son's it. journey from just blatantly disrespecting his father to just being like, I didn't move, Dad, even when the building blew up? Oh, that like, black guy almost stole him. <laughs> right, but, but somewhere in between that, killing him and and him just being just the most dis- – he was like, he's not even a real firefighter. He fucking sucks. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, whoa! Where did any of that come from? What yeah, he was like, he was I, like I, evil Joey Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> I, what I what like was were... the what was the reason why they wanted to um, kill or whatever subdue and kidnap the the vice president again? For um, I can't remember how Money many millions of yeah. purposes. Yeah, there it was, was like one point seven whittled and then whittled down after everything five hundred million. But that was also what I was going to ask. Like, was there ever an explanation of why he, Powers Booth's character, why he was doing all that, why he was so bitter? Everybody the, has a bad day, man. Well, <laughs> it felt like when when the other, when the uh, the secret agent, the secret service guy outside was like, you know, you're one of us. And he's like, ding, ding, ding. And he hung up, hung up the phone. I was like, oh, okay, so we're going to get the explanation like you know, like like in uh, uh, in the Rock, you know, like Ed Harris tells us why he's yeah. in his own country. Like he has a right. reason. And I'm yeah, like, I was something, and he's just bitter, and he like whatever. Like the vice president sent all of his friends somewhere, and they all died or something. So he's just here ahead to of fuck its time, shit up, man. you know. The movie's just ahead but- of its time. These people, they were just you know, they're like, you get it. It's the government. You get it. You know. Like- <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah, he's, yeah he works and, just, and, he just, shit. and just blankets everything government yeah. oh gotcha right. oh. <laughs> yeah yeah inner I, inner government terrorists or inner like him not having like a tie to a certain mob or a cartel or whatever it, it's probably better to leave it vague like that it, uh, he was a secret service guy according yeah. to the wiki okay but you that all you had to do was just have I mean, and again, Powers Booth, fucking phenomenal actor. Give him two minutes or one minute of dialogue where he just says, "Yeah, you know, oh, you don't fucking remember me, motherfucker." Right, like, you know, right. I took, I a, took a bullet, bullet for, for you, this previous. You know? yeah, I took a. Oh, I took yeah. a bullet for this previous president, and they never paid my hospital bills, and uh, yeah. you know, I, I turned. My wife like, left me, and I live in a yeah, yeah, yeah. trailer. The whole thing. Yeah. Then, then you're there. Yeah, like it's you know, not hard to tie that in. I feel like you don't even yeah. need to go that far. You could just be like, it's the government, and I know all, too much. I'm stealing everything. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, it's just you need some sort of explanation or, or exposition or something. It's just he's a badass. Where'd he come from? Why is he doing this other than money? He, how does he know all this stuff? Yeah. No explanation. He's Powers Booth. That's why. <laughs> and if he has the resources to do this, like he could have become, 
you know, some sort. You could do it easier than this. This shit is wild. And you literally, yeah. had, then you had a computer hacker with you. Just yeah. have him steal the money. That dude is playing <laughs> Doom. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally playing Doom. <laughs> well, I, I got, I got to hand it to John Hyams because I think after doing Time Cop, he, I, I feel like they just stepped up the action. It was probably because they had a little bit more of a budget. Then Time Cop, I think it. I think this was thirty five million, and then it ended up being, um, um, like something like sixty four million at the box office. But Time Cop was less, maybe twenty five, twenty six million, and then made more. But this, I felt, was more of a real movie. Like I felt like it's not as good as Time Cop, but there's just no. I mean, Time Cop should be in the Smithsonian. But um, this is <laughs> this is a far better motion picture. It, do you think Sunday. Time Cop did better because it it also reached the sci fi audience where this is kind of like if yep. you're not into action? Because well, did we do Time, Time Cop? Because no. I think I went to see oh. it, but I I don't well, remember we, a lot of it. I'm sure we did it. it you was like, don't did we? remember audio the, only years years ago? Yeah, like you don't it had remember seven years ago. Wait a second. You yeah, we, don't, you don't remember the TEC, the Time Enforcement Con- <laughs> Commission. You, you don't remember. remember. Oh, okay, Senator, no, I remember. Thank you, Senator Aaron McCall. You, you don't yeah, remember yeah, the yeah, grief. You don't remember the grief mullet. Come on. You don't remember. <laughs> you, you don't remember DC Metro Police Officer Max Walker. <laughs> Max. <laughs> And you don't remember his wife Melissa, who was attacked by unknown assailants, and Walker was left for dead. The house explodes, killing yeah, Melissa. But, yeah, I remember now. I remember. Uh, I I'd forgotten. I remember now. Well, I, I really thought Peter. Hyams, <laughs> I I got to give him his his respect as a director because I felt no, this like, one was this, this one was very. It was, I mean, it was, I guess in, in reality, it's like simple because they didn't really go a lot of places. So they were, I mean, it's pretty, um, it's pretty obvious that they, they just filmed during a game for like, you know, for two hours to get all those w- wild live shots. And then they just like, you know, when he was playing hockey, it was just, you know, like real close ups and stuff and nobody was there. But um, like, and then they just ran around that they ran around that place for probably a couple of weeks, you know, just running, running through the bowels, you know, doing all those wacky scenes. But speaking of which the explosion, you know, when the uh, guy dropped down into the, uh, into yeah, the, the display. Yeah. 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 I could swear like eh, it all exploded. It looked like the arena was empty. They, yeah, they yeah. cut a little flash of the, they cleared. Yeah, that was they. They had to do it like that, right? They had to have it be at the end of the game where it was being evacuated, or it was evacuated. Oh, I'm um, sure it was. Our, I'm sure it was long evacuated, and they just kept cutting real quick so you couldn't see it. No, well, no, that's because odd. There, were, <laughs> no, they were, they were evacuated in the film. I meant. Like, oh yeah, they yeah, already. Yeah. Like, because because remember when he loses Wasn't his daughter, thing? people are already you know headed towards the door. Yeah, I don't think they right were now. when that was happening. No, I think, no, was, right I think that was the cause of all of the evacuations. Yeah, remember he swung. Yeah. He's that happened. He landed on the scoreboard and then he swung into the place with and his um through his chemical nuke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, somehow didn't kill anyone in there, but he just made it nope. in fine. You know, this move without this movie, we probably wouldn't have gotten Hyams uh, next blockbuster which was end of days in 1999 oh, arnold schwarzenegger who we don't really do a lot of his movies here, that, I, that that was movie, the highest grossing film of Hyam's directing career that movie i remember sure. walking out and it was like it was like the first time you saw michael jordan not play well like i walked out of i walked out of it <laughs> You know the albino dude he's who was like mortal. the homeless albino dude oh. in that movie. He's yeah. like a he's like a comic on the New York scene. He's around. He's all over the place. His name is Victor. In, in End of Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The albino like homeless dude who's like the devil or whatever. He's like yeah, 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 all yeah. janked out. <clears throat> yeah, he's just like a he's like a comic on New York scene. But by the way, did awesome. you guys, I really really enjoyed. He fights. He loses a kid as his for on the job right. 
And then, whatever, 20 minutes later, he kills a mascot. And she, she gets her neck caught in the dishwasher thing. So she's slowly getting strangled. And then and like, steamed. Like, yeah, like the mm-hmm. hero he is, he just stands there and watches her die. Like <laughs> poached. And you're like, oh, no, no. Like, pull, pull her off and give her one punch and knock her out. Like, that's like, be a hero. Like, but he's just like, no, I'm just going to nah. stand, stand here and watch you die. Death. Death might have fucked me up, but now I'm a psychopath. So I'm just murder. He he actually seemed to watch a lot of people die. Yeah, the powers boot. Man, there and I saw that. I saw powers boot when the the helicopter. I'm like, they're gonna watch. They're gonna look at each other and oh, just. Yeah. And, and it took him so long to die. He just kept <laughs> yelling and falling. <laughs> <laughs> the worst helicopter crash in the history of film, by the way. It was so bad. <laughs> Wait, so when um when the guy who plays Hallmark uh is revealed to be in league with the other dude um Foss, they both just kind mm-hmm. of excuse themselves and meet up in the rafters. It's so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then when he reveals like his true, uh, you know, intention to JCVD's character Darren, um, this is my favorite scene in the movie. By the way, he sets him on fire <laughs> with, the, yeah. with the, mini, the mini Super Soaker 100. It's like four <laughs> inches long, and yeah. it just was... shoots out a gout of flame. That's like <laughs> nine feet long. So much flame. <laughs> well, there was, I'm, I'm sure there was a deleted scene where you just see like like JCVD like. MacGyver the shit just, just pumping up with 20 feet. <laughs> also, and then, you and have then he's got a gasoline just go in your bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it was lighter yeah. fluid. <laughs> it was and, literally lighter fluid. He had a, a can of lighter fluid. You can't even fill amazing. up a super soaker with lighter fluid. It turns into <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> whatever. Also, he was, he was very skilled at those particular bombs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if at the end we had an M. Night Shyamalan thing where it was re- revealed that he started the fire at the beginning of the movie, I'd be like, all right, oh, well, God. I believe you because this guy's <laughs> I think all of his movies should just start with him getting a head injury so he can, like, dismiss the rest of the movie as, like, a death dream. <laughs> He just has CTE. <laughs> just the whole every John <laughs> Van Damme movie is just another horrific bout of CTE hallucinations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. That's the twist. <laughs> I mean, the after, twist. after you've killed people in the kitchen, multiple people in the kitchen, you've been all over the arena. The arena, you've disabled bombs. I mean, what else is there left to do? Oh, oh, let's let's go in the game yeah. and play goalie. You know, there's I only mean, a few minutes left to save everybody. Right. Let me just get a couple of minutes on the ice first. That's how you know. Luckily, I'm still wildly talented at that, <laughs> like I am mm-hmm. fighting. It's and like once again, fighting. I have to point out there are dead bodies everywhere <laughs> no one's doing anything no yeah. one's moving them <laughs> if you they leave your seat everywhere you over one you left <laughs> there's remaining <laughs> hostages like upstairs yeah People are, there's fully automatic gunfire going off in this arena, and everybody he blew just, a hole in there. Yeah, he set They're off joking. one of the bombs. He fucking started flooding. There's a flood in the arena. When did the oh, half the arena crazy. become yeah. underwater, dude? Like, the, where did all that water come from? That's yeah, that made no place. sense. The bomb goes off, and then behind a door is just the whole universe <laughs> of water just <laughs> torn out. Just, where did all that come from? When 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 Foss <laughs> is trying to afli- it's trying to flee, you were you was everybody thinking like shoot the pilot, shoot the pilot. <laughs> 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 I, I did not I will see that say, coming. I thought it was hilarious. Like J- JCVD saves the vice president. He runs over and the Secret Service is like, hey man, um, you did such a great job. The vice president would like to talk to you. And then the daughter runs away and he's like, 
she, he's got my daughter. And he goes, and he goes, he goes, watch him. Just wa watch my son and go. And you're like, why wouldn't you have the secret service people go after them? Because they're trained people. You're not a babysitter. What are you doing? You can't just I, leave a child here. You're not. I just Batman. love that he had a wig on hand. And then yeah. the mustache. I was like, I was like, where was the wig and the mustache? Like, where did he have that? Yeah. They didn't even tell you what was going on either. They just close up on a mustache and this dude going like this. And you were just like, I cheered. What is I happening cheered. right now? <laughs> how, how, made no how, sense. How bummed are you if you're the pilot and you're like, man, they just called me in for this gig. I had no <laughs> idea this guy fucking tried to kidnap the fucking vice president. Uh, and then you're just dead. Like, I, I, love, I love, I love JCVD's thinking. It's like, well, listen, you know, you're an accessory to kidnapping, extortion, and uh, you're trying to take this guy out of here with this chopper. So it's you got to die. It's driver. <laughs> I will say he's a glorified, he's a flying Uber driver. You got to die. Mm -hmm. JCVD, <laughs> judge, jury, and execute. No. Oh, and also, it's like, he, did he get shot? He got shot. Yeah. How did he suddenly overcome that? Like, well, <laughs> let me go ahead and grab this ladder and pull myself up onto this truck. Oh, no, no, no. You're no, shot. No, no he, he bumped him he, right there. He was he about to shoot. Defense. He was about to shoot him, and then the like, um, like the like the ladder hit him or something, and he didn't shoot. Yeah. Yeah. But he but was he, willing to get shot. It was um I the only thing I was bummed out about was the fight between him and Powers Booth because you're like, okay, this motherfucker has legitimately like on the phone to you threatened to murder your daughter. And <laughs> he was not he was not just an, an un like an unruly animal. Like I would have been fighting the man's face off. Like I would have been becoming that Stanford chimp. Like I just would have went. <laughs> and all right, <laughs> he's just trying to he's just trying to punch him a couple times. You're like, what are you? Why? Like I would be trying to throw him off that platform the entire time I was there. All right. Yeah, I, it's um, like I, that's I, the guy uh, you're gonna take it easy on. Yeah. <laughs> Not the you lit another guy. secret service man on fire. <laughs> you put a, you put a bone in the throat. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. Oh about my that. god, I forgot about when that. When he broke it like it was a bottle. Yeah. That was wild. I was I, like, wait, they serve that. turkey legs at the arena like the fair? <laughs> Medieval times, dude. They just get like, is this the Renaissance fair in Pittsburgh? <laughs> and he just smashes the drumstick bone on the table and turns it into a, like a glass bottle broken and shivs the guy. It was, and then, I, I will say, it was pretty <laughs> unreal. It was so good. I would so have good. never thought out of anything that you could shatter on a table <laughs> and stab somebody with turkey. Yep. Leg, Brand new, yep. brand new. I was not expecting that one. I'm like, wow. Also, also, he, he shoots the chopper, and then the chopper just hurdles down to his daughter. And you're like, <laughs> you. <laughs> Dude, did it, did anybody think? Hey, everybody, quick interruption, letting you know today's episode is brought to you by Century Media Records. They're killing it right now with new releases from Suicide Silence, Jesus Peace, Unearth. Lorna Shore, Sangwa Sugabog, who absolutely ripped it up at Milwaukee Metal Fest. And right now you can go get their vinyl before it sells out at centurymedia.store. No promo code needed. They have a ton of great bands, whether it's Napalm, Death, or any of the bands that I just mentioned. They were an awesome sponsor of the festival. I can't thank them enough for supporting today's show. No promo code needed. Just go to centurymedia.store and build up your awesome collection with some of their great releases. Big thank you to Century Media. And while I have you, big thank you to IndieMerchStore.com. Another one of our great Milwaukee Metal Fest sponsors and vendors. And I uh, was so psyched to see them out supporting the show and seeing that line at their booth every day of people picking up flags, T-shirts, hoodies. I mean, all sorts of accessories music, vinyl, they got it all over at IndieMerchStore.com and all you got to do is use the promo code JOSTA10 and you'll be supporting this podcast and supporting a great company. IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JOSTA10. Now back to the show. Let's back it up. Let's back it up. Did anybody think 
right when he goes to see his son with the tickets to the game. I liked how they made the stepdad cool because I was like, yeah. oh, don't don't kill the stepdad later. If you if the stepdad mm-hmm. was a total dick, you would have known that he was going to get it later. Yeah, he would have showed up at the game. Yeah, but uh, but. When you see the ex-wife, you're kind of just like, uh, oh, no, no, no big loss there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't, but he didn't get an upgrade. Like, he didn't get a chick at the end of the movie, right? Like, he didn't, he doesn't get no. an upgrade at the end. Single of the movie. dad life, very progressive. I'm saying this movie yeah. should have been made in that's 2023, true. dude. It really, yeah, we I was not see the splits. We didn't see his dude. butt. We did not see him sex anyone down. No, yeah. and and so my thinking was sudden death too he would have been local pittsburgh hero we've all been to the bar after a big show in pittsburgh shit can be crazy, crazy. He, listen they know how to throw down in pittsburgh like he would have been all over the news as thwarting this terrorist fucking attack oh can i he pitch this been, movie real quick he I, would have been getting some some serious attention but also i was thinking wait if you were in the pro semi pro hockey league in French Canada, French speaking Canada, how is your name Darren McCord? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why didn't you stick with Jean Claude? <laughs> it's or why didn't they call him? He could have called him Jean McLean. <laughs> yeah. He very much wa- he likes the American names. I don't know why. Like we all like you, Jean Claude Van Damme. You could just be, you could be Jacques. Like I, well, Jacques yeah. would have worked here. No. You know what I mean. No, he's trying to convince us that he is an average Joe. <laughs> uh, I mean, let's be honest. That's why he did th- th- like his. This was right at the beginning of his like his downturn because this is right after Street Fighter, and that was, uh, that was the biggest. That was his biggest. Like, I'm going to play the American soldier in Street Fighter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Please leave, please leave the script reading room. Like you are embarrassing yourself. Do you, think, <laughs> you, think you know that really was job? that really was Luke Robitaille. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's really it. in the movie. And yeah. didn't he win? He, I think he won the Stanley Cup with the Red Wings at one point, at least once, right? I th- yeah, I think you're right. So you think that fans were bombed that he was <laughs> like on the, <laughs> the Penguins or what? Or yeah, because wait. I can't yeah, remember. He yeah, he's on the he's in the Penguins locker room, right? Or no, does he go? No, yeah, because they go. Oh, are you gonna? Some other player says, "Oh, are you gonna go speak to the Black that was Hawks?" To the president, and, yeah, yeah, to the vice president, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you get um, to keep your job as the fire marshal if the stadium blows up on your first day? No, probably not. <laughs> So I feel like uh, sudden death too. He's gonna be a bartender mm-hmm. just picking up a lot of strange. Yeah after closing like that's but but a guy that, uh, comes to town looking for him and it's foss's brother or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> die hard too um ian moran was that that was really him he was in there too oh um, by the way i just want to say the boy He's so stupid, like, because he's like, don't <laughs> move. You stay right here no matter what happens. And they just keep showing all those scenes where he's just sitting there after everybody left. And then I was just laughing because I was like, wow, I was I was totally that child as a kid. I was that stupid. And it, was like, <laughs> it, was, it was part of my own personal stubbornness. Like, you're just like, okay, he said I can't leave. And, like, even if the building comes down and you're like, yeah, but no, just so you know, son, <laughs> you, know, you can leave. It's okay. I, There's a thing. I wrote down, I, what, when his son said all that. It's like, I didn't move it. I actually wrote down, he hugged his son, realizing he is on the spectrum. The most autistic answer that kid could have given. I didn't move, Dad. Yeah. I didn't move. All right. <laughs> kid, what is wrong with you? You're <laughs> Or he just hugged the son and he was like, and he was just thinking, like, Jesus Christ, I'm the fucking worst father. I've never <laughs> seen these kids. I'm never seeing these kids again. My child has no survival skills. <laughs> do you do you believe that uh that Arnold and Sly and Bruce all turned down this role? No, this feels like a John Claude Van Damme joint. 
yeah, a, J- a JCVDJ. <laughs> <laughs> Stallone turned down the role because he didn't like the quality of the script. Willis turned it down uh, partly because he was already working on Die Hard with Avengers. <laughs> Wait a minute. Stallone didn't like the quality of the script. <laughs> the balls. Cup the balls. Cup the balls. You know, cup the balls. <laughs> Every single script Stallone does, he ends up co-writing. But he was like, I want to write this. And they were like, no, no, you can't. They were like, it's already done. You can't do it. Here we go. Here we go. According to Randy Feldman, he wrote the first draft of the screenplay for the movie as a comedy action movie parody. The only scene that remained in the finished film was the scene where Van Damme fights the penguin mascot. The original vision for this movie would become the basis for the remake of welcome to sudden death in 2020 Michael Jai white oh Michael Jai white. we gotta watch that for the podcast all right also the announcer used in this movie is actually the actual pittsburgh penguins announcer mike lang yeah, they wouldn't and, have put that guy's um, face on, the, on camera unless he was, like, already a fiction. <laughs> and, uh, and the film was shot during the NHL lockout during 94-95. Oh, Howard's gone. Oh, oh we lost out. Howard. No. That's all right. He'll be back. When he comes um, back, I have the trailer for Welcome to Sudden Death pulled up. <laughs> Mark, Marcus Noslund was an un- unknown NHL player at the time, but later became a league superstar with the Vancouver Canucks. He also appears in the film. The Chicago Blackhawks were played by Cleveland Lumberjacks, the Pittsburgh IHL affiliate at the time. And Ian Moran was a lumberjack at the time. He obviously went on to be in the NHL. Um, while shooting inside the Civic Arena, in some sections, there were cardboard cutouts of people because production didn't have enough money to pay any more extras. Like American Gladiators. Yeah. <laughs> they were expensive, man. Yeah. A- sequel, extra work pays. Uh, a sequel to the film had been written and was planned for fall of 1997, but after the film underperformed at the box office, the, pro- the project was scrapped. Um, so there was going to be a sequel. Fuck, I wonder what it was. The original script called for the Penguins to play the L.A. Kings. The role of Emily McCord was originally offered to Mara Wilson, but her parents forbade her from accepting it due to the script's violent contact. Content. Mara Wilson, that's um, uh, Matilda, right? Oh, is mm. it? Yeah, I think yep, you're right. the daughter, yep. So the role of the daughter was going to go to her, but they didn't like how fucking brutally violent the movie was. <laughs> like you can't go from Matilda to whatever this is. Yeah. Oh yeah, she was. Um, yeah, she was definitely like the most adorable little kid. Yeah, she was in Mrs. Doubtfire too. Of course they wanted her. They were like, oh, uh, the whole movie is going to be this. This girl is so precocious. It's going to work. Everything she says will be just be great. That's yeah. Oh, God, it would have been so much better with her. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> casting that was wrong in this movie. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else made sense, man. Let's be honest. All right, we're gonna watch the trailer for Return to Sudden Death. Well, welcome to Sudden Death. Welcome Michael to Jai. Sudden Death. Yeah, with what? Michael Jai White. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what year did this come out? Yes. Yes. Twenty twenty. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna kill everybody if my demands are met. The clock is ticking, and you can't stop it. Every why day. was she on the floor? Demolition hand hand expert. You know why? Kill him. Daddy. I have to find my daughter. Is that the guy from Color Me Bad? Chaos reigns. Just knowing how short the trailer was, we are not watching that. No. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do that to ourselves. Straight to DVD. Half of the runtime of this uh, YouTube video is Michael J. White's been kicking tops off of bottles. That's amazing. Maybe better than the movie. Yeah, I'm sure that's <laughs> way better than the movie. Guys, you want to hear something depressing, guys? <laughs> what? This film, Sudden Death, starring Jean-Claude Van Damme, gross, grossed less 
in its entire theatrical run than Die Hard with a Vengeance did in the same year in its first weekend. I mean, that makes sense. I get that. Why? Because Bruce Willis is that much bigger of a star or just because it had more IP? Yeah. You know, Bruce Willis is the everyman. So when Bruce Willis gets in a hostage situation, he's like, well, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just have to punch you and figure out how to use this gun. And then, like, when this fireman gets in a situation, he's like, well, luckily I know all fighting styles known to man. I'm a biochemist. Yeah. I'm an engineer. I'm a biochemist. And if I wanted to, I could win the Stanley Cup, but I don't have time because I'm a fire marshal. Yeah, no, it makes sense to me. 100%. He did get a bloody nose, though. <laughs> is, it, is it true that Jean-Claude, I, I've seen this around on other, like, weird facts about his movies, but I guess for this movie, here's another, like, weird fact where it says he's a devout vegan, and that even the shrimp that are like flying in the kitchen or whatever that off a tray. They didn't were, look real. It looked were, fucking weird. Yeah, they were they were fake. They were like made. Like someone had to sit there and make fake shrimp because he didn't want any real fish. Like he didn't want to eat. Oh. You know, I'm really glad. I'm I'm really glad my chick isn't here right now. She took a walk with the kid. <laughs> so she they didn't <laughs> they didn't interrupt. <laughs> but um um like we, I watched some of these movies with her, and she's like, "I gotta say, he is very handsome, and she's vegan." And I'm like, "All right, I don't need, I don't need more, more reasons." <laughs> it's all propaganda, Charlie. Don't fall he, for it. Also, what he was vegan back then, like, how did, how did those people not get him on the, on all those commercials and shit? Beat That's insane. Don't know. I, I mean, where would you say this falls in the best in the in the greatest hockey movies? Hockey movies? It's got to be top four, right? Uh, oh, I, Are there I'm more than five hockey movies? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, That's yeah. True. Are you kidding? Oh, Goon? Me? Goon is number one, the best hockey movie I've ever no, seen. No, no way. Slap Goon shot. was Slap awesome. Shot. I like Goon. Goon was good. Goon was Goon good. Is good. Goon 2. Didn't they do a Goon 2? Not so good, I think. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't talk about that. <laughs> Haven't seen either one of those. Goon was fun. It's, a, it's about a dude who fights in hockey. Oh yeah, I remember. It was, wasn't it like um, is it's Stifler? Right? Sean. Yeah. It might, yeah, it's Stifler. Yeah. Would you and, call uh, four, Would you call Four Brothers no a hockey movie? Stifler and Sabretooth. <laughs> what What What'd you say about a hockey movie? What, what Would you call mean? Four Brothers a hockey movie? Oh, sorta. If you want, no, no, yeah. not really. Four Brothers is about. The kid, the the four dudes who are all Not very clearly brothers. adopted, <laughs> yeah. and uh, then their mom dies, right? Yeah. And well, what's worse, Goon Two or Slapshot Two? If we, you guys Oof. would kill me if you. Do, do we need to watch the trailer to Slapshot Two, or even worse, no. do we need to watch the trailer to Slapshot Three? No. <laughs> we don't oh. need any of that. Please, Maybe can we watch the trailer? When I tell you who's in Slapshot 2, please, can we watch the trailer? Before we go, let's just watch the trailer for... Because because Mighty Ducks is a good hockey movie. Slapshot is a good hockey movie. Um, what's the one with the beer where they jump in the beer? That's a hockey movie, no? I don't remember that. No. Strange Brew? Oh. Is that, no, wasn't there a hockey, hockey movie? movie with, didn't Rob Lowe do one? Young... Was... Are you pulling up the slap shot too? <laughs> <laughs> Billy Baldwin. Billy Baldwin. Yeah. Oh God, no. Billy Baldwin. Here we go. This is already too much hockey. <laughs> There's too much. Oh, oh! This is the full movie. It says trailer. Oh. No, it's the trailer. Well, what does it just... say? Costume designer in the trailer. <laughs> because that's what trailers do now, I guess. Yeah, yeah everybody talks about the costumes in the trailer. 
Maybe they just put out the first three minutes of the movie as a trailer. Yeah, I think so. They do that. Baldwin. No, this is no, weird. This is Richmond. weird. All right, sorry, boys. Woo! They. It's sometimes hard to find like a solid trailer for B movies. <laughs> they they like to people like to put so, a lot of bullshit out. Do we want to do we want to keep on the the JCVD train? How no. many more does he have? No, we're done with JCVD. We're done <laughs> for the moment. He's what, got a what, shocking what, amount. What uh, what what do you say on the scale of one to ten of awesomeness of this? I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it a seven point five. Yeah, I'll I'll go with a seven point five because it's not it's not quote unquote awesome. There's not a lot of really wacky shit. So oh, it's- I disagree. We had the turkey. We had the turkey bone uh, shiv. We had <laughs> we had the really really bad helicopter crash. We had the zamboni full of dead people. I'm just and, saying we and just a- saw a cyborg. So you have to take <laughs> cyborg sudden death. Which more is awesome? I would he- say cyborg is like. An Oscar for awesomeness. Yeah. He poached a trans mascot. I think it was <laughs> is, is Happy Gilmore a hockey movie? Oh, no. wow. Wow. Maybe. That's now. Technically. It's just, it's just an element of hockey. In it. it's, it's, it's a hockey you know, golf cross. But he brings the hockey stick to the golf. <laughs> it's. It's like it's a, a hockey hybrid. golf crossover hybrid. It's a hybrid. <laughs> it's a hybrid. <laughs> Howard, what we say? Oh, what do you say? Oh, yeah. Ten, I'm, ten out of in ten. Awesome. I'll give it a seven. You know, it's like because the movie was actually okay, but at the same time, it's ridiculous, and that made it pretty funny. Yeah, so, uh, heard out of fire. Come on. Yeah, there there are some moments in this where I laughed out loud. For real, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they well, probably didn't not... mean for me to laugh at that moment, but I did. Whoa. I don't think <laughs> you're ever really meant to laugh during a John Claude Van Damme movie, like on purpose. It's just inadvertent hilarity. <laughs> are, are we gonna do any more Uva Bowl movies or no? Please, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm okay to go down that uh to go down that path. I we, we can. I don't know which one, but House of the Dead. Wh- who's in that one? Yeah, Does it matter? <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly. I mean, <laughs> if you really want to go deep, I mean, there is an appearance of from Clint Howard in that. Ooh, oh, really? Howard. Yes, the brother of Ron Howard. Or we could do in the Blubberella. Dungeon Siege Tale, which we've already watched the trailer. No, no Blubberella. No, I saw the trailer. We're not doing that. Uh, <laughs> or but you were interested enough to watch the trailer, so I appreciate that. <laughs> House of the Dead was one of his early ones, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe he was trying then. Let's. I maybe that's no, a, no, no. Holy no, fuck! Three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, we gotta watch this. <laughs> House of the Dead, Alone in the Dark, Blood Rain. He does. Yeah, he has Far Cry. Like, these are video games that nobody wants to see a movie made out of. And wow. He just wow. does it. He just does it. And he makes money. This has to be some sort of money laundering. No, he's he the uh the um where is he? Is he is he German? Yeah. At some oh. at some point at some point it came out that like the like the German South government African? he gets paid to to make the movies. Like he gets a grant or whatever. So yeah. he doesn't care what anybody else says. Oh, that's Oh, what what is this madness? I mean, we could do Alone in the Dark starring Christian Slater, Tara Reed, Stephen Dorff. Fuck, that kind of sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? All right, yeah, guys, I'm going to let you guys decide cuz I got to run, but hit me up. Is it going to be Alone in the Dark or House of the Dead? Wow. Just on cast alone, I say we go Alone in the Dark. Yeah, oh, I, let's do it. Right. I hate myself already for this. You did right. this. Yeah, that was your, that was your uh, idea. Thanks everybody for watching, listening, and and maybe I don't know. By the time you've watched or listened to this, maybe you can fucking send us a real suggestion so we don't watch House of the Dead or <laughs> Alone, Alone in the Dark, yo. Terry. Oh my god! All right, thank you guys.
real quick outro for you everybody we we, we got three more uh how awesome is this episodes that we're going to stagger out over the next week or so in the pocket they're 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 in the cut and howard is going to be out of the studio with adam d very soon they're finishing up the record so we'll be back hopefully he's going to do his own episode too because it's been a long time since he had a solo episode oh, he used yeah. to be on every month that's right he's got to give us some sort he's got to give us some sort of exclusive 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 we will uh we'll, we'll check in with howard soon in the meantime go to gasdigital.com and you'll when you sign up you'll see the bonus content page it says bonus like 2023 you'll see we got a uh, class of 99 we got moonfall we got that terrible steven seagal movie we watched the patriot but not the one with mel gibson <laughs> <laughs> the other patriot Oof, oh that was God. a rough one but shoot us an email Josh's show at gmail and uh, i'll be on tour in europe let us know if you're coming to any of the shows i'll be at download festival i'll be at Hellfest. i'll be at grass pop I'll be at Reality Bite. I mean, you'll see it all on hatebreed.com and uh, order your leftover Milwaukee Metal Fest merchandise at martyrstore.net. But use the coupon code soon. You get 20% off. It's going to expire this week. So use the coupon code MMF24. Got to thank centurymedia.store. No promo code needed. Go pick up that Sanguasugaba. Go get that new Unearth. Dude, Unearth absolutely destroyed. They just crushed it. Do they play a bunch of new stuff? They did, and they closed out that uh, that side that that bar stage. No barricade. No, oh, wow! People jumping Banger. off the stage and stuff. Banger of a show! Absolutely oh, awesome. Yeah. And they're going to be playing with us in Paris. Uh, if anybody's listening from Paris, where it's uh, Hatebreed Terror on Earth and more, so come out and see us in Old Paris. And then uh, make sure you support centurymedia.store and get that new on earth and also support metal blade records, go to metalbladecom slash death ray vision to pick up the new death ray vision album featuring our buddy, Mike D from kill switch engage. And, uh, and I got to thank monarch heavy monarch heavy.com use the promo code six, 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 and you're going to save 15% pick up the creep and death, pick up the Somnuri album Desiderium. They just played with me at the, at the pre-party for Milwaukee metal fest and um and then yeah who else we got to thank prosthetic prosthetic records another one of our sponsors they got the new pupil slicer album go to shop.prostheticrecords.com pick up the blossom the album blossom by pupil slicer use the promo code mmf 2023 and you'll save 15 percent off at shop.prostheticrecords.com Calm. All right, everybody. We will be back next week with the Class of 99 episode. Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Brian Undercoffler, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St, Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Monson, Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler, Mike Horgan, Emma Horgan, Arnorock, Patrick King, Oscar Brummett, Stacy Steinecke, Fernando Somoza, Patrick O'Brien, Dominique Zimmer, Ryan Sanders, Lara Snyder, Daniel Burt, Milwaukee Metal Sausage, Adam Boss.